my name is Lisa and this is Lisa's faith and budget planning channel um, where I like to talk about my faith and talk about budgeting so here today we are doing um, we're going to do a flip through of my budget planner this is the happy planner budget extension pack it is a great beginner uh, planner it's actually not a planner it's just I bought discs and I bought the extension pack and made it into its own planner and I put some laminate on the um, dividers to kind of make its own book and give some reinforcement so um, so what I wanted to do was do a flip through of February and show you guys where we're at and what's going on and how I am excited and not so excited to report that we are working the Dave Ramsey program and it's I am so glad I took the class last summer. I'm so glad uh, my church hosted it, and I'm so glad that I've learned so much from it and continue to follow it because, yeah, it's making a big difference in my life and my family's life. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, the first thing I do for every month before I open this is I start out um, going to God and going to God with our family budget. This month I struggled with that. I just went in and started the family budget and kind of breezed through things with my husband. We're on such a routine rut on how we budget that uh, we really didn't have a lot to talk about until a few days later and he was already traveling for business. So anyways, and then I had something to put down. My first page always begins with this. I do, I like to look up scripture that has to do with money for um, anything about money whether it's tithing whether it's you know your finances and what God's perspective is on it um, or you know any warnings about money or anything like that that the Bible has to offer I go through and I type in either in my Bible app or in Google and type in um, finance or money or something along those lines or tithing and I write a scripture, and this month's scripture is Hebrews 13.5. And I'm just going to read it real quick. It says, Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, and I quote, and this is quoting God, and I absolutely love this part, and this is why I wrote the verse down. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I needed that verse. When I found it, I needed it that day because some things were going on and you'll see in my prayers what's going on. <laughs> so, and I wrote a pr I always write a praise after I write the scripture and the praise was, you I praise you Lord for never forsaking us in all our needs, especially our financial needs. And then my prayer was a prayer for finances to be cover to cover our pest problems plumbing problems and tire needs for the armada so here I get very specific with the Lord and say what's going on and surrendering all that to him um, the pest problem that we have um, we have or can come out every so often and either spray for bugs to keep the pests from coming in and I also have a termite contract with them so we can protect our home we just bought our home last April and we want to make sure we never have termites because the last place we lived, which was a rental place, had termites. And I saw how the damage could really, how it does damage and how much it could cost a lot of money if you don't protect your home. So, um, so Orkin came out and did their usual thing and they went into the attic and discovered rats in our attic. And I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Um, it's very terrifying to think. I don't know. I've never experienced rats in a home before. Uh, we've rented over 20 some years. Actually, I've rented my entire life until last year. Became a, we became homeowners for the first time. But even my parents had rented um, an apart our apartments when I was growing up. So I never really had a home and a place that was ours until this past year. And so knowing that they're rats and knowing I'm the one you call or my husband is the one you call for maintenance <laughs> for your home. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a little nerve wracking. Um, and uh, we um, got from Orkin the report back on 
what the treatment plans are for getting rid of these rats. And it's very expensive. <laughs> the low end is just over three thousand or just under three thousand dollars. The middle was over five thousand dollars, and on the high end, it was eighty five hundred dollars. And it, the levels depended on what they did. The highest they were taking out all the insulation and sanitizing and taking care of things, and then putting in these metal grates where the entry points were found. And I'm like, okay. And you want to do the high end because you want the best for your family, but that is a lot of money. <laughs> in the middle, um, I don't think they remove the insulation, but they do treat it and they do treat and make sure there are no rats and they guarantee there are no rats and they do the, the metal grating on the outside um, to cover the entryways and make sure they can't get back in and so on and so forth. So there's a lot that goes on with this. So, and they're in both, we have an attic over like over the top of the house but then in behind my uh, master bedroom wall there is a small attic space as well and that attic space also had rats so it's like oh no <laughs> what are we going to do um so anyways uh, we have that going on and that's the big money problem that i think i am so sincerely thankful that i found dave ramsey's program and that we've been working the program and that we're in a really good place that we have a few options to figure out how we're going to pay for it. Um, and then we've had a couple of plumbing problems. One of them I've already taken care of the in the boys um, in the hall ma uh, bathroom in the hallway upstairs uh, where my sons have their bathroom. That uh, the the toilet, the reservoir water that holds when you f before you flush, it just sits in there. Yeah, the bolts underneath them, you know, I guess after 20 some years just rusted out and decided to leak and then it all dumped out on the floor and that was not fun. So I had I had a plumber come out and fix it because I don't know how to fix these things. I don't know what to do. So we've done that and then thankfully the Armada doesn't need tires right away. I had, our state requires an inspection. Um, the guy that we go to, we see him all the time. He's like, you're going to need tires um, by next year if you did an inspection we would have to fail you on the tires. So in the next few months, we need to do the tires. You probably have about 5,000 miles left on the ones you got. I'm like, okay, so I'll probably be getting those soon. Um, but I always like to come to the Lord with anything going on, especially financially, every month and any time I see this page to just give it to the Lord and go, I'm trusting you in this. Um, before I even really dive into my actual budget. But this time I kind of did the other way around, and I think it's because God had me wait till I discovered about the rat problem before and then write this in. So I, I think that's how I did it. So um, let's get started with my actual budget and... Um, show you how beautiful it looks. I absolutely loved how the budget turned out. Um, this is my February budget. I use Sarah Marie stickers. I use Happy Planner stickers and I use some Walmart stickers, which I really love. And I'm sure you can tell which is which. Sarah Marie is always the washi strips and the script stickers. Walmart, I use these dots at the top and then and on my sidebar here, the expense stickers are Sarah Marie and Happy Planner are these over here with the uh, Gold, uh, the I think it's rose gold foil that goes around it. So everything's laid out pretty much the same as it is every month. Nothing new's really changed here. And the only thing and the only difference I think I'm going to have this month is this student loans. I have not sent a payment in for that. I've been overpaying by thirteen fifty a month trying to snowball debt, pay that down which I've successfully done since October. In October, it was over 15000 Now it's uh, right at 8000 just under $8,000. So I paid a lot of it off already, and I actually don't owe a monthly payment on it right now. So um, we're good there. Um, I may put, like, I think the interest was just under $40, so I may send $40 in just to put activity in a payment in this month, but I actually don't have to pay anything based on what the uh, online uh, statement shows me. So what I'm doing this month to take care of that pest problem and how I've kind of adjusted things and 
figured out where money's coming from. Um, after I do my budget um, and everything that's left over, there's right now in my buffer in my checking account about $600 if I have to use it. And I mean, I'm trying to take everything down to zero, zero. I mean, to pay for this, um, this um, pest problem with cash as much as possible. So we have a thousand dollar emergency fund. Um, I have a hundred and twenty dollars and fifty cents left in my husband's travel expense, um, and I'll add that to the thousand dollars. I'm going to add this thirteen fifty and not. Originally, I was going to pay it on the seventh, and I actually forgot to schedule it. So it, it obviously I didn't pay it yet, um, but I could have done it any time through the month, and that that I think was a God thing too. I think. He allowed me to forget. <laughs> he allowed me to put it off until this thing came up. So I would have the cash available. So the thirteen fifty plus the thousand dollars is two thousand three hundred fifty plus a hundred and twenty dollars and fifty cents. Um, you know whatever that is is part of what I'm using to pay for this. Now we do have a second emergency fund that I keep. Um, in cash in our house for hurricane and tornado emergencies. Uh, we live in a coastal region that has hurricanes and tornadoes. In fact, we had a tornado warning just on Friday and today is Sunday. And that tornado warning obviously didn't much come out of it, but over the weekend we did hear places in North Carolina where tornadoes did touch down. So it's a real thing and something you have to be careful for. And I have a small safe in the house. It's like a briefcase kind of safe. And I can put cash and papers and stuff in there, and that's what I did. I put all our papers, our birth certificates, and social security cards, and our checkbook, and stuff like that. And then I keep cash in there, and if, if we have to duck and cover and hide in one of the bathrooms downstairs to protect ourselves from a tornado or a hurricane gets bad and it starts flooding here and we got to get out of here, I can grab that safe, I can throw it in the car, and, um, or hide it with us when a tornado comes. And I can have cash on hand um, if I need to go into a hotel, if I need to get food for my family, if I need to get gas for the vehicle, and get to wherever I'm going to take care of my family. So I keep about a um, thousand dollars there. So that would make it to three thousand three hundred fifty dollars plus the one hundred twenty dollars and fifty cents. And then I also have something over here that are our sinking funds, and I've already kind of worked out the numbers. Um, and I didn't put that thousand dollars from our um, cash reserves in the house because I didn't think of it time when I was write, writing this. But we have twenty eight hundred dollars in sinking funds already. I've actually already put zeros in here where I normally put money in the second half of the month and decided I'm not paying it this month. And I'm going to deplete this down to zero and then start my sinking funds all over again in March. And that's fine. I'm fine with that because if all I'm replacing is this 2800 plus what I would normally put over here um, for February, and I think it came out to $3,100, um, as you can see right here, if that's all I have to replace, then that's not bad, to be honest with you. You know, a few months of putting a little extra into savings, I can build that back up and still put my normal sinking funds in here. So I'm okay with this. My husband's okay with this. Um, these are just goals that we set that we were hoping to prevent other future uh, problems to have to pay credit with, like a roof over the house, which was when we decided to do that, that's a 14 year fund, you know, cause our roof was at least six years old and we we're just putting $60 a month away so we can build up $10,000. That way if the roof need to be fixed in 14 years, not fixed, but replaced, we have cash on hand to do it. That That's what these goals were. But we can redo the numbers and refigure that out and start building that up again after we deplete this and go back to um, adding money to our sinking funds. So we're good with that. So we're depleting the sinking funds. Um, we have the emergency fund. We have the school loan, the travel expense, and that $600 cushion. And what I didn't add in here, and I could add in here now, is the $1,000 um,
So that gives six thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars and seventy cents to um, cash at home is where it's at. So I can take that and I can t deposit with and combine all these funds and pay Orkin what we need to at least get the over five thousand um, dollar second tier thing done. Um, I, I know my husband has his own account and he has some of his own money and depending on how much is in there it may allow us to do the full removal and do what is recommended. Um, but he and I are going to have to talk about it and figure it out when he gets back. But the, this is where the money is coming and this is why Dave Ramsey's program is really good for people to help them reset their minds on how to look at money. Money is provided by God. <laughs> it is God's money in the first place and he is taking care of us and he's teaching us things through this program that I just, I don't think we would have been able to handle this before. My biggest fear in buying a house was the upkeep and the things you have to spend to keep it taken care of. And this is one of those things. And so I'm just like, wow, God, you are so good. Look at this number. I can do this. I just pray I don't have anything big happen after this for a while and let me build some back up. But even if that happens, he has a plan. and. This is God's plan all along. Even though I planned for this, he had something else in mind because he knew this was going to happen. And I thank, thank the Lord for that. So here I just write my bill pay checklist. Um, I've already erased out sinking funds. I've already erased out um, my um, um, school loan and some stuff. So I have some blank spaces in here. And I've used the whole page. So if I have to add more, I can just add it in these spaces and that's fine. I do cover my tithings and we do tithe even in a crisis like this we do not stop tithing um, it's important to continually do that we do it as an act of worship and showing faith in God um, unless he told me otherwise I'm just going to tithe like always so um, anyway so I'm moving on from that so the next thing I've done for my budget is I break it down to four active areas where money is spent. So I have my groceries, my restaurant, my miscellaneous, and my gasoline. These are the four areas that I um, call my live or active uh, budgeting. And um, since um, my husband did get paid on the 7th, everything, the 6th through the 1st, is already allocated for. I like every time he gets paid to allocate whatever we've already spent and make sure we're still on track and see if we've spent too much or if we need to spend more, things like that. Um, and then after the seventh, anything after the seventh, I start putting in here. Um, and this will go on, the next time I do this will be on the 21st because he doesn't get paid again until the 21st. So this will be a lot longer. And if I run out of room, I have a spare page um, in the back here. And I can just divide it into groceries and restaurants here. I usually don't go over in miscellaneous. And I, I never go over in gasoline. Um, even when my husband is not traveling for business and his car's been driven a lot, it would probably only go down here. Miscellaneous, I've never used a full page for. But I have only last month, for the first time, um, did my groceries and my restaurants go past this page. And I've always done this, so I don't know what I was spending my money on last month, to be honest with you. And then I, these stickers up here, the washi strip, they're for Sarah Marie's. This is from our September kit I had left over. They were too long um, because it was from a grab bag, and I normally don't buy the 8.5 and 11 by 11 sticker washi but I thought it made a cute little square down here and I wrote down my budget amount so I can take this number and subtract it and kind of keep a tally in the back of my head. Oh, this is what I have left. Am I on the right track? This, that, and the other thing. So, so this is my budget extension pack from Happy Planner that I put rings on and this is my budget. You know, this is what I've spent so far. Um, my overflow and then at the end of the month I do a month in review 
every month. Um, I have my last month in here. I think it's on the back side of my scripture. Yes, it did. So I just made a list of where the money came from and then what we did, decided to do. Originally, I was going to pay this Amco in, Feb in January, but I did it on February 1st and just how I was working things out in my head. So uh, just some things I wanted. I have in the beginning of my book um, this here. Uh, this is just some notes on my annual budget and then uh, sinking funds annually and obviously all this is going to change this is this was my January praise uh, scripture pr um, praise and prayers and um, which everything was going smooth so I didn't have a lot to talk about but I thanked him for everything and I wrote some scripture down um, these are my savings trackers for when I start getting into savings uh, full-time I hope to do it this summer for our six-month savings um, as soon as I pay enough into the mortgage, which we would just been paying the regular payments and they're small principal payments right now and mostly interest payments. Um, once I start really getting into this, after all our debts paid off and we start putting into savings, then this is the next debt we're going to tackle. So now this is um, the school loan. And as you see, I have February here, um, and I probably will erase this once I confirm that we're not using that school loan. And um, I will put zero or $40 or whatever we decide to put here, and then make a note, um, needed the money for something else. And then in March, we'll start again, and I will have that available to me. So I'm very excited about this. I hope to have it pay off in July. It may be August now, but that's okay. Um, maybe God has other plans. Who knows? <laughs> Here's my uh, stickers. I kind of keep them in this pocket. And um, that is everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed um, learning what I've learned, how um, managing your money doesn't have to be scary or doesn't have to overwhelm you if you have a plan in place and you have a budget in place, you can have your money work for you. And we are having our money work for us in this time of need. And um, I hope everyone has a blessed day. And I will talk to everybody soon again. So have a great day. Bye.